So at, at some point, as I was looking up uh, different images of brain anatomy, I came across this image of this plastic model of a, of a brain stem. And I started to notice that the top half of it, which is the thalamus and the, and the ventricles that are sitting on top of the brainstem, this top part up in here, I started to, this is the, being the thalamus, I started to realize that it looked like the kind of a cartoon snout of an animal, like the way that you would draw a dog's snout or a rabbit's snout or a, or a sheep or, or a ram snout. And I started to realize that I'd seen this shape before. I'd seen this composition of a ram's nose sitting on top of, of a column. And I quickly realized that what I was looking at was the ram sphinxes of Karnak, the, the statues on the avenue of sphinxes at Karnak. And when I put them side by side, it seemed to be almost a, a pretty obvious match to me that what I was looking at was a representation of a brainstem in the ram sphinx of Karnak. And the more I started looking at this image, and the more I started to see this plastic model in relationship to these ranch faces, I started to see an even sort of bigger correspondence of shapes and, and, and relationships. And I started to notice that when you look at other renderings of brain stems, you could get this sort of generic composition where you have this tubular leg shape, you have a torso, you have a face, and you have sort of a hat. The same sort of thing I was noticing in, in these ram sphinxes that we were seeing a very similar compositional arrangement of shapes. Now in the plastic model over here, when you're looking at the infidibulum and the mammillary bodies, it's kind of smushed. This is kind of a compressed looking thing, so you can't really see the face there very much. But when you look at other illustrations of brain stems, you start to see more of this kind of humanoid figure. You start to see a, a leg form, a torso, and then you start to see a face in between this piece of the brain, which is the cerebral crust. These two round shapes, which kind of look like eyes, are the mammillary bodies. And this piece right here is the infidibulum. Based off of this correspondence, the infidibulum is sitting exactly in the same place that the uraeus is on the Egyptian headdress. Now, when we look at other examples of brain stems in relationship to this ram sphinx statue, you have this kind of cartoonish looking simple version of a face. And even the way that the, the cerebral crest kind of bends outward, the statue of Osiris, his face and his headdress, both kind of follow that same sort of that same sort of arc. And the more I started looking at this, the more I started to realize that this is exactly the same as in Gerard David's painting of the Transfiguration of Christ, that there is a figure that is representing the brainstem that's holding up the brainstem. And you have this ram-headed shape of the brain, when you're looking at a coronal cross-section of the brain, it has sort of a ram-like look to it. You kind of have these horns on the side that are similar to the horns of the ram, but the thing that really clued me in, as I was mentioning before, was the ventricles. The ventricles of the brain make this kind of snout, this kind of three-pointed cartoon version of a snout. And in some images, if it's an x-ray, like in this one, or an MRI scan, you'll see the ventricles as very large and expanded. But in other images where the brain has been taken out of the skull, the ventricles have contracted and they're smaller. So it was becoming more and more clear to me as I was looking at this stuff that the ram sphinx was, was a brainstem. It was not only showing a brainstem, but it was showing a brain sitting on top of it.